Shares. Hi everyone, I'm Shez. Today I sat down with Murray Watts to talk about his brand new book. It's called Yours Truly. This is what it looks like. Um, you can find it now on Amazon and other retailers that are available. Uh, and it is a collection of short stories that he's written over the last 40 years. He's taken the best ones and he's put them into a book just for us. Uh, I've read the book. Uh, I read it in an unbelievably short amount of time because I was completely engrossed. Uh, and you're going to find out a little bit more about the book and about Murray himself now in this interview. Actually, double check. Are we recording on all of the devices, all the devices. that now? Mm. All right, good. I think we're okay. I think we're okay. Yeah, so tell us a little bit about yourself. You've been in the industry for quite a while, right? Yeah, I've been writing plays for 45 years. How did um, you start out? Well, you know, the very first broadcast I ever did was the Radio Merseyside when it was first born. Because mm -hmm. I'm from Merseyside. Uh -huh. uh, I don't sound like it, but no, I am. I was going to say, you don't sound like a Liverpudlian. Well, you know what? My mother taught elocution. Oh, really? So she made sure that my brother, sister, and I <laughs> didn't get the local accent. So we've uh -huh. been displaced people ever since. Uh -huh. um, but uh, now I'm proud to come from Merseyside. Um, and that had just formed um, when I left school. Mm -hmm. And I had a period of time working in the city centre of Liverpool. And I just got the opportunity as an 18-year-old to start writing stories and broadcasting. And performing That's, and broadcasting. That sounds like a pretty rare opportunity. I think there's... There's quite a few people out there nowadays who that's kind of their dream when they leave school is to go straight <laughs> yeah. into being involved in television and radio and drama. But it sounds like you exactly. kind of hit the jackpot. I did. And it was just, a, you know, occasional stuff, but it was great. Um, and it encouraged me. Um, when I got up to university, then I started to um, write stuff. And I, I wrote my first play in 1972. Mm -hmm. Um, put it on and acted in it and persuaded friends to act in it uh -huh. and that went well um, but the really big break was um, a, a, a theatre company called Upstream had just been formed in London in 1973 mm -hmm. and they saw my second play um, which was on in Cambridge and they said we love this play and we're going to the Edinburgh Festival mm -hmm. to do The Lion in Winter by James Goldman but we want a new play a contemporary play to be part of our presentation so would you come and direct us in your play mm -hmm. so that was a big thing because i'm still a student yeah that's uh, massive and i'm directing some people who are twice my age some of them mm -hmm. uh, and it was a big responsibility but we, we made quite a splash at the end of the festival because there was dance there was poetry there was jazz we had two plays on we had a photographic exhibition um it was a really really big presence with a christian vision behind it but out there in the marketplace, um, lots of different contributors. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, that, that's quite something. And it, it's all a long time ago, but I've been to the Edinburgh Festival many times and uh -huh. had many shows on since then. But um, that really launched me as a playwright because instead of going and doing a doctorate in Holland in contemporary Flemish expressionism, mm -hmm. which, which I was about to do, um, <laughs> I gave all that up in order to join Upstream as their resident writer. So age 21, I'm tapped to the theatre company. I earned 50 pounds in my first year. Wow. <laughs> but you know, we were all doing it for love. Well, and, hold on, uh, that, was, that was back in the 70s. How much, how much would that be nowadays? Uh, well, equity minimum then for actors would have been about 35 pounds a week. So my earning 50 pounds in a year wasn't a very good score. No, okay. <laughs> One week's work, really. <laughs> really a miracle that you were able to survive. It was, and my parents are to be thanked um, for that. I know I that you wrote in the, the kind of the prologue of your book about your own uh, kids going into yeah. the industry and that you, uh, yeah. you really respect their decision to not go out and get a proper job. Um, yeah. So well, what did your parents think about you going into the, um, into the arts? You know, something amazing happened. That, and Nigel Goodwin, who was the founder of the Art Centre Group in London, mm -hmm. that was... A, an amazing organization and I only discovered this about two years before my parents died so this was oh, wow. about seven years ago okay. uh, or eight years ago my mother said to me you know that Nigel sat us down and said when you weren't in the room there are not many people out there who are writing plays um, who have a faith and who are concerned for 
the truth, if you like, from the point yeah. of view of yeah. Christian perspective. Um, and they said, you know, your son has a talent and you must encourage him. Seems like the sort of thing that, I mean, even nowadays, if you want to get into the industry, then you really have to have some kind of support that is going to help you get there, at least in the early days, because it's so difficult to get into. Oh, it, you know, it's one of the biggest issues because storytelling is one of the most important things in all of history. Mm -hmm. But it's even more important now. And I, I may be misquoting, and I haven't double-checked this recently, but um, ricocheting around in my brain is a quote, which I think is Plato, that says, those who tell the stories rule the world. Mm -hmm. um, it's a good quote, even if Plato didn't say it. Maybe his, <laughs> cousin, maybe his cousin said it. Let's, uh, let's take the opportunity to talk about your book. Um, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show the book to everybody uh, that's watching over here on this other camera. It's called Yours Truly. This book came out, it's, it comes out this year, right? This isn't available to order yet. Is that right? Uh, it is available it is from available. now, okay. really, more or less. So I think it's just been published. Okay. Yeah. Yes, I think we got a book on. We got the the book on pre order, and uh, I actually uh, I've got Rejoice sitting over here. Rejoice uh, only gave me the book yesterday because we had some complications coming through with the publishers. But I did manage to read the entire book in the last twenty four hours, and oh my I was. It, I tell you what, though, it was not a difficult book to read in twenty four hours, because as soon as I picked it up, I found myself. I was immediately halfway through it as soon as I picked it up. Um, because it is so easy to read and just to I mean you can probably tell this a bit better than I can obviously being the author um, but the book and um, um, you can correct me if this is this is not the correct summary of it but it's it is a collection of short stories that you've written over really the last 40 years is that correct yeah why did you decide to call it yours truly and we obviously have this because I grew up in a generation where we actually wrote letters mm -hmm. and posted them uh -huh. and hand wrote them um, Which I'll put my hand up and say I feel like needs to happen more often. Yeah, I've done it a few yeah. times in my life, and I feel like sending letters is really an art that needs to be appreciated, especially if you're yeah. trying to get the attention of a girl. I'm just saying. Absolutely. Very effective. Rejoice the is giggling. Hand, I think she agrees. Absolutely. The handwritten, the personal touch, and the, the little things in the margins and the loving elements. And yeah, addition. makes a big difference. And also, you have time to think about it. You get to the post box yeah. and think, oh, and it, I don't think I should send this. Yeah. This is my email. is such a bad idea. Yeah. You press the button and bang, you've already said. Yeah, text you can't take it back. Yeah. Um, no. So it, it's a kind of authorial thing. You know, you say yours truly when you don't know somebody. So, you know, um, it, it's, it's a little formal, mm -hmm. um, but it's a statement. Yep. You know, so you can say with best wishes or even with love it's to your girlfriend or with mm -hmm. lots of love. But yours truly is a little bit sort of, this is me, and you know. And so there is that tradition of letter writing. So you're bringing that together with the idea of truly, truly, I say to you. And the thing is that because stories are made up doesn't mean they aren't true. Can you kind of explain your creative process? Because I think... I mean, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a young creative, right? I'm sure many of our viewers as well are young creatives and yeah. trying to write something that really gets across a message that you're trying to tell to people is a very unique talent. And I wondered if you could share a little bit of your secret when yeah. it comes to trying to get across a message to people in a, and especially in a concise way. Well, you know, that's a, that's a great question. Very important question. Um, less is more. Mm -hmm. um, you notice the incredibly economy in the Bible. I mean, Look, we've got four Gospels, and we don't even know what Jesus looked like. Mm -hmm. I mean, nobody goes into long descriptions about how he looked, the clothes he wore, who wore, what, what sort of things he liked to eat, all the kind of stuff we might want to write about. Mm -hmm. But the narrative is so pure and strong. And again and again, you see this yeah. in, in great writing, not just biblical writing. It's why I like there's some 20th century novelists. You can see this in a book like the Old Man and the Sea by Hemingway, or you can see it in a wonderful book like The Fall by Albert Camus or The Plague. You see this incredible stripped back kind of writing. The, a famous piece of advice given, and I, I've never been able to find out who originally said this. Um, some say it was Arthur Quiller Cooch, who was a kind of early 20th century figure. But the phrase is, murder your darlings. Mm. In other words, the bit that you think is best the purple passage, the bit where you really kind of go to town, get rid of that. Um, right. I'm a screenwriter and I'm used to writing lots of screenplays and 
frequently having to cut the best scenes or the, the, the scene that I thought was so funny and moving and I worked so hard over it and you know there I am with producers where I just oh sorry that's got to go that's got to go and so I've learned to be very unsentimental and so with these stories you could say they've all been dropped in the acid bath you know mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah a kind of hiss of steam and smoke and um it's a kind of process where you just say if you don't need that bit take it out can you can you give us some uh, places where people can find some more of your work if they want to see more is that okay um yes um they could go onto amazon and get a copy of the miracle maker which is okay. the biggest project i was ever involved with yes so i was the screenwriter of that film that was oh. for um for people all over the world um particularly children and young people um about 50 million people probably or more have seen that movie mm. um, and they can, you can easily get that and and that would that's really is storytelling it's from a child's point of view but of course adults the world over have loved that um there's the lion bible for children you can get where i rewrote the bible for children <laughs> um, you know, so how much not, how much rewriting did you do <laughs> well you know um, I, I kind of put it into immediate mm -hmm. language and emotion and everything. Okay. So there's that. Um, there is a novel of The Miracle Maker that I think you can still get hold of. Mm -hmm. um, I've written lots of books of jokes and stories over the years and, and theatre sketches, you know. Murray, thank you so much for joining us. It's been an absolute pleasure. I've enjoyed talking to you so much. Um, so thank you. I'll, uh, but we'll let you go. We'll let you go and, uh, go and feed the dog now. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate your time very much, Murray. Thank you very much.